So, if you've been following my videos on Ida's type system, in the last one, I lied about what the next video would be. Uh, we're actually going to be doing a raise, because I realized that that's not something I ever actually covered, and a raise and Ida are worthy of some pointing out. So, we'll begin with one of the most basic things. How to actually define an array. Um, one thing that's a little bit weird is because of Ida's type system being so incredibly strong, so incredibly nominative oriented or name oriented, we actually have to actually define uh, the type of array rather than just saying, hey, it's just an array of integer like you can in most uh, C-based languages especially. But if you're coming from something like Python, it, it, it's largely, even though they're a bit dynamic, uh, it, it largely works the same, the same way. Uh, so we'll begin by that, and we'll just do a simple integer array. Now you can name these whatever. Uh, the convention I normally see is the underscore array ending. Uh, I have sometimes just seen it as the plural of the type, so in this case it would be integers. I generally don't like that for type names. Uh, for variable names, I find it fine, but uh, for type names I find it a little bit awkward uh, at times, just given how the pluralities of things differ. Uh, yeah. But then, much like other type naming or type definitions go, it's is and then the type, and in this case it's an array. Now we'll need to define the index, but first uh, I'll go and say that it's, a, that the, it's an array of, and then in this case should obviously be integer. Don't confuse people by putting something else in there. Now as for the index, there's a few ways to go about these. Um, but before that, I want to cover one of the ways Ida is rather different from other other languages. See, in the C, C++ style of languages, an array is typically zero indexed and goes up to whatever the length is minus one. So an array of eight uh, elements would start at zero and go all the way up to seven. Uh, still holds 8 because you're starting at 0 and not starting at 1. In Ida, it's a little tricky because of two things. First, you don't actually have to index by an integer. You can, rather, index by any discrete type. So that would be integers, modulars, and as far as indexing purposes go, those would work the same way. Uh, but also, enumerations. You can index through enumerations, which can be really handy if the different places in an array have some type of specific uh, meaning rather than just some numerical position. Uh, this can be really useful for things like uh, hardware addressing, uh, where you have, say, a bunch of pins with specific names have an array that represents the entire set of pins and you can actually use an enumeration to in, uh, to reference the specific pins rather than have to look up what number uh, each each thing is, uh, and then pass uh, the thing, the, the the full set of the array uh, into the pins. Uh, not all not all interfacing specifications work that way though. Sometimes you just have a specific pin, but I'm not getting into hardware standards. Uh, we'll begin with the simplest one of just indexing by a not by just by a number. So we'll do integer, and we have to specify a range for this because um, again, Ida is really strict about these things. Uh, and at first, this might seem a little alarming because, like, well, what if you want a very generic thing? Like, integer array should be a basically whatever length. Um, I'll cover that in just a moment. I want to get the fixed size arrays first. So let's do uh, integer 
range, and then one through uh, eight. It does look like I need to fix that with the syntax highlighting. Okay. Uh, from there, we can define the array. So i terrible with example stuff, so I'll just do IA for integer array. And let's say that it's an integer array. And we can go ahead and start defining this. Now, um, much like with the record aggregates, uh, array aggregates work very similar in that if you don't specify exactly what value is where, it's assumed to be positional. Uh, so for arrays especially, this actually makes a lot of sense, and you typically don't need to uh, define the exact position of values going in. You can just go with the standard, uh, just, just write it out like normal. Uh, so we'll match these up exactly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. <clears throat> and just to make sure I'm not being an idiot with anything, because that happens. Let's try to build this. And we're good. So from here, uh, let's actually do something with this. Uh, line, I, line. Oh, right, because this will be returning in uh, an integer. So let's get the image of it. Oh, Jesus, I did this again. I, I swear I do this every single one of the videos. <sighs> oh, go in the background. Oh, cool, it's not responding when it loads. That's cool. You good? You good? Go away. There we go. Okay. So we get the one, which you'd expect, because we said that the uh, array is indexed from zero to, or from one to eight, rather. So the first one would uh, obviously uh, correspond there. Uh, if we were to change this, just to show what I'm talking about, uh, change this to from zero to seven in more like C style indexing, we can go ahead and build this again and Oh my god. I'm on a roll today. And this should make sense, because even though we're saying it's the first index, we are also saying that the indexing begins at zero, so the I guess I shouldn't say for, well, the oneth index, I guess? That seems weird, though. Is it, it, I like that we can define <laughs> arrays that start from one, because our, at least in English, the entire convention is around beginning from one, so it's bizarre to start from zero. But, yeah. Um, Result is what would be expected. Uh, typically speaking, you, I've really only seen uh, starting from zero or zero indexing uh, when interfacing directly with C code or when interfacing directly with hardware where the um, Convention with computers is always to start from zero, just so that you don't waste one of the possible values or pins or whatever. Uh, so for that purposes, I, I do see zero indexing a lot when interfacing with hardware. Uh, like I had said though, quite often you can uh, have enumeration set up for that instead, uh, which makes it 
I find considerably more pleasant to work with than zero indexing. Um, let's show off the enumeration thing though. And we'll just do four of these, but let's do... And I think this will work. I don't remember if I need the range clause for numeration. I don't think so, though. Uh, found typing. Oh, right, because of this. So let's change that over to first. Build that, and okay. Run that, and this should, again, make sense. The first part of the positions index, and the first part of the array, everything lines up. Uh, going back, though, because you'll notice I didn't actually have to specify a range or anything for this, if we wanted to do a similar idea for integers, where... Uh, it just sort of covers all of the integer, and it is going to complain about this. I, I just want to be clear. Um, what it's complaining about is that when we say that the array is indexed by integer, uh, we're saying, well, we're really for any type, but we're saying that the array contains an element for every single index of the range of integer which is huge. Uh, we're talking everywhere from, what is it, negative 2 to the 31st power all the way up to 2 to the 31st power minus 1, at least on the x86 line of processors. It's a ridiculously huge range, and nobody in their right mind would write out values for all of that. Uh, and typically speaking, you don't want that whole range anyways. Uh, you can pass subtypes to this, and one really easy way to show that, although it'll still complain, is if we use the positive subtype. Whereas you can see that's still valid. It's still complaining though because positive would be everything from 1 all the way up to 2 to the 31st power minus 1. Uh, we can... do this, however, it's still complaining this time, but it rather because it only wants up to 10. Now it doesn't complain at all. This still isn't very useful for what most of arrays, at least that I've seen, get used for. Uh, I just wanted to show that off, that, that you can uh, have the range defined elsewhere, that you can define a sub-range uh, either inside the type definition or as uh, another subtype, uh, which you do depends on whether or not you need to reuse that range for some reason. Uh, if you do want to reuse the range, use the subtype. Where we get into the much more practical array uh, definition is with integer range, but an unspecified range. Now you should recognize this if you watched the last type system video on records, where this sort of, this, I, I think they call it a box. I, honestly, I don't even remember all that well what they call it because it's just sort of a generic placeholder like I don't really know or care what this is right now and oh nope why did you complain okay I think I remember what's going on uh, I had to go into one of my old, old uh, 
uh, repositories. Something, some just reference some code that I've written up before. Uh, I believe if we change this to positive, it should. Right. Let's get rid of this. Save that. Okay, we're good. And just to confirm, if we change this back to integer, save that. Okay. Okay. So, what's going on with that? And I've completely forgotten about this just because I'm so used to sort of always doing this. Um, I just convention, sort of. It's a very loose convention, but Ida's convention is to in, uh, start indexing from 1. So when we say that it's an integer range of whatever, it gets confused, basically. Uh, because if it starts at 1, well, the range of index, the range of integer is it starts before one. So get in the habit of using positive and then the sub range, or at least in this case, it isn't a sub range, you're just saying what it, whatever is fine. Uh, what it'll do is for something like this where we're passing an aggregate, it will set up the index, uh, the, the range, from 1 up to whatever is required to hold this. So in this case, it will be 10 automatically. If we don't have an aggregate to pass to it, what we can do to set this up is just say that that is 10. Uh, it's going to complain a little bit, or not. Uh, let's do, oh, right, uh, 1 through 10. And there we go. And it complains that we're trying to read from something that hasn't been assigned yet. So we can go about it this way. And there you go. We run this. We get the expected result. Another thing to keep in mind, because this is, and this applies to a lot of values stuff aside from arrays, but I do want to make a point of this here because it's very relevant. And again, with the C style languages, a value is more of a reference, or a, the, the name of the, the, the variable rather is a reference to a value, and when you assign uh, in those languages, you're changing what the variable refers to. Whereas in Ada, the variable does not refer to something, but rather it is that value. That's why I, in when I talk about Ada specifically, I tend to use the two interchangeably, because they they are. What we're saying here is that IA is this thing. Not that it refers to that, and that value is somewhere tucked away in the computer, but that it is that thing. So if we reassign this, we should expect to get two and you do, but this thing doesn't disappear. IA just trim this. This literally overwrites what IA was before. This matters a lot, not so much in what I'm doing here, where the two different styles will behave the same, but that if I try to do something like this. it will fail. Because as I had said, it doesn't just start referring to something else, it tries to be that something else. And the length of this array is only five, but the, 
the IA is said to be an integer array of 1 through 10. So there's five values missing here that the compiler is rightfully going to complain about. Uh, this behavior is unexpected, uh, very unexpected, coming from a lot of other popular languages. Uh, similarly to the uh, uh, record aggregates, we can do an others clause. Oh, not two commas up. Where we specify something. Now it's not going to complain anymore because it knows what to fill in the other values with. It knows the length of the array, and so therefore it knows how many values it needs to fill in. And just to show this off, since this is a good situation where I can do it, we can do this. So you'll notice that, unlike with this array, in this one, the very first value is actually going to be zero, because we never specified the first, so it's going to use the others clause. And the starting from the second, we have one, two, three, four, five. Starting from the seventh through the tenth, we have zeros again. So if we build this, and run it, we get zero, like you would expect. And I think there's one more thing I can show off. I am not sure if this applies only to strings or if this is something that's actually defined for arrays in general. Uh, I will find out. I've never actually tried to do this with just like standard arrays. I've always only ever done this with strings, but strings are uh, strings are not special in Ida, much like characters are not special in Ida. Uh, strings are quite literally just an array of characters. So this, unless it's something that's specially defined for them only, this should work. We'll find out. So let's do, all right, I just do IB. Uh, we will need to define these though. And I can remove the index. It's that's fine. So we do one, two, three. And we'll do four and five. And we do IC is an integer array. And we're going to try concatenating these. I'm gonna try typing right though. That that kinda needs to be done first. I see. Uh, it does work. So this is possible only because the the range is not predefined. So for IA, the range is calculated to be one through three. For IB, it's calculated to be one through two. And for IC, because it knows the range of IA and knows the range of IB, it can add them up together, uh, know that the range needs to be one through five, and then just pack all the values in appropriately. And we get the correct result. If we switch these around, you would expect the array uh, to be 45123, and if we run this, you do get the expected result again. Uh, so, like I had said, arrays are mostly pretty standard in IDA, but there are a few quirks due to how assignment works in IDA, as well as IDA's very flexible approach to array indexing, but also very uh, aggressive approach to strong typing 
that warrant some pointing out of these differences. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you have, consider giving a thumbs up and also consider subscribing and the notification bell because, yeah, YouTube. Lovely. Have a... Oh, I hit myself in the eye. Have a better one than I'm having.